Hello everyone and welcome back to your piano lesson. If you are here for the first time, I am Gianluca Fronda, your virtual piano teacher. If you want to discover interesting facts about me, you can watch the introduction video of this channel. I'm leaving the link in the description of this video, where you will find also the link for my artistic channel Gianluca Fronda, pianist and composer, if you're interested in original music and covers. Talking about this channel, don't forget to subscribe and uh, let me know about yourself uh, by commenting, tell me when uh, you have started, if you are finding my channel interesting and you are improving your skills also thanks to my videos. And don't forget also to share with your friends if there is anybody interesting in piano music, any that, anybody that you know. So now time to go to our lesson. Today it's time to talk about acrobats on page 22 of John Thompson's Isis Piano Course Part 3. Very interesting piece, this one. Um, today we can finally confirm how has to be the scale of F major why John Lucas is mentioning the scale of F major? Because you see, uh, in the scale drill and in the song Acrobats, we have the B flat, the B flat, and we are in the key signature of F major. If you remember, on page 20, you were supposed to write down the scale of F major as well. And now I want to show you, because I promised that at some point I would have shown the scale. Uh, et voilà, now I'm going to write for you the notes of the scale and then we will play. The second note has to be G. It has to be whole, one whole tone distant. If this is F, this obviously is G and this is exactly one tone distant. We have the black in the middle. Then, let's carry on. The distance between the second and the third degree has to be the whole tone and we are indeed going to the a. Let's double check on the keyboard. G A has to be is one tone. Then pay attention. The distance between the third and the fourth, according to the scale, the low of the major scale has to be a semitone. And where do we go? From A, if I go to the B, I'm moving of one tone, whole tone. I can't go to the B. That's why you have found at some point in the beginning, let's say, of Thompson part 2, the B flat. The B flat is needed because we have to respect the sound, the low, the major scale. Indeed, I'm going to write here for you now. B, but with the flat just before. Here we are, after many, many, many months, has been finally clarified the reason why you have found at some point the B flat, exactly like has been clarified if you have paid attention, the reason why, at some point, you found in the beginning of Thompson Part 2 the F sharp. It's all due to the need of respecting the distance between the degrees of the major scale. Between 6th and 7th, you need the whole tone. And indeed, to move um, of one tone from the E, you must go to the F sharp not to the F, because this is a simple semitone. Now let's go back to the B flat. We stopped at the fourth degree. Now, having the B flat on the fourth degree, automatically the distance of one whole tone is respected, because we must go now to the C. Look, I'm writing C, and indeed, between B flat and C, there is the whole tone. Otherwise, if you go to the B, this is a simple semitone, yeah? Then, between C and D, we need... Between C and D, there is the tone, according to the low of the major scale. Look, between 5th and 6th, 5 and 6th, whole tone. And indeed, by writing D and by playing D, you're respecting the whole tone. Let's see, between 6 and 7, we need the whole tone again. And I can write E, et voila! done, because if I go here, this is a semitone, this is a whole tone, because we have the black key. And now, look, by respecting 
uh, the natural distance between E and F, because F is the first and obviously has to be also the eighth, we have seven notes, and it's obvious that in the scales the eighth note must be the same one that you have played in the beginning on the degree number one, on the first degree, and I can write F, and by writing F I am automatically respecting the need of keeping one semitone of distance between seventh and eighth. I hope that is all clear now, yeah? Step by step we will unveil, but I hope that you have written correctly all the, all the notes, yeah? Let's now move to the, um, to the song first, and then we will play also the scale drill. I want to play first of all at a high speed, and then we will talk about the technical uh, details, even though um, there are not that many to be clarified. I hope that at this point you know pretty much. So, Allegro Animato is quite fast. I start mezzo piano. I know that maybe it's too fast, slightly slower now, and then uh, really slow at the end. One and two, and 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 one and two. And one and two. Now, let's talk about a few important things. In this song, the F major scale... I'm playing with one finger because I don't want to unveil yet how you will have to play with the right hand and with the left hand. There is a specific fingering, a specific fingering pattern that has to be respected. But let's talk about what you see here. It has been divided in between the hands, even though it's a good um, habit, the one of starting from now playing the scale of F major that is at the end of the book. And indeed, I can even show you now how to play which one has to be the fingering of F major. Here we are. This is the pattern. Uh, it's better to start from the scale of C major and G major. C major and G major, you will notice they have the same identical fingering, a fingering that I like to call standard fingering made of block of 3 and block of 4 plus the little finger at the end and then again block of 4 and then block of 3 same as the G major yeah I will repeat these things to clarify even more this is the standard fingering is the fingering of the C and the G major F major is inverting this block. Here it was first of all 3 and then 4. In F major we have first of all 4, pay attention now, then block of 3, don't get confused, this fourth is a temporary finger. For now you can say that you have twice block of 4, and it makes sense, will definitely help you, yeah? I'm adding one extra line to say that for now you know that you have twice the block of 4 fingers to play your scale, going up and going down, but then in the future you will have to understand that this F, this fourth finger on the F is a temporary finger. Look, I show you how it is, the right hand uh, scale. I'm omitting from now the chords, again slower. mind too much the fingering that I've been using here is something that we will develop step by step. Um, you have noticed that after playing the fourth, uh, the B flat with the fourth, I have passed the thumb. This is one of the most important things to understand from now on, because it's needed. You will have to abuse of the thumb passage in the future for playing the scales, for playing the broken, uh, the, the arpeggios. And then, at some point, you will have to cross over the thumb. 
I don't want to spend too much time on these things. I want to simply show you a little bit, yeah, because then is a, a very important chapter of the uh, your preparation, and then it takes long time. What about the left hand? The left hand starts from the fifth, but then you have block of four and block of three. Block of three going down, block of four and fifth. I don't consider the fifth part part of the patterns because you will discover in the future that to study to play the scale you have to consider your your hand made of three fingers one two three or one two three four and these are the patterns that we will be using and abusing for playing the scales time to go back to the song I've already played acrobats uh, fast now I want to keep going with the explanation as you see, we have the scale divided between the hands. The first four notes with the left, the second block of four with the right. And then uh, you have to obviously try to do your best to keep, to respect the phrasing. Only one breath from the F up to the uh, C and E. Yeah? yeah? One and two and da 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 ya, mm, ta, mm, ta. And you do the same when you go down from the E down to the F. You will do Don't forget to respect the diminuendo, same as here, respect the crescendo. Then you have the staccato, normal note. Um, the same phrase you had here, now played starting from mezzo forte instead of mezzo piano, with a crescendo. And then at the end, the, the second phrase of the first, line, the, the first line is played forte, with a slightly different ending. But you start from the end F, uh, D and B flat exactly like here, the ending is slightly different, because we have B flat and D exactly like in the first line, but now uh, leading to F, C on the right, and uh, A on the left. I can introduce it is, uh, anyways, uh, uh, the F major chord in a specific position or inversion, but you will discover in a few lessons. Uh, now time for me to play acrobats slowly. One and two, and one and two, and one and two. As promised, I'm going to play for you the scale drill that you anyways should play and study before studying the song The Acrobats. Uh, at high speed, it is also in this case we have the scale divided between the hands. Uh, it is. If it's too fast, slightly less and then very slow. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and mind the fingering as usual, yeah? You have five and two on C and F and also five and two on B flat and F. You will move to five. So the second will be moved from the C to the B flat. Uh, now very very slow. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and 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 three and four and I think that I explained pretty much. There is nothing I think that needs extra explanation. Pay attention to all the details, the crescendo, the staccato, that are um, either in the scale drill than in the song, acrobats.
So if there is anything that I didn't mention that you would like me to explain, just let me know by commenting. Let me know how you are improving your skills, if you are studying uh, well also following my tutorials, if they are useful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have never done until today, because maybe it's the first time that you are landing on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for today and see you in the next video. Bye!